Welcome, guys, to today, MVP Friday, and um, I'd love to kick off a new series. So I thought it'd be really cool, um, so you guys didn't always have to hear from myself, Leah, and Trent and Paul about how to be successful as an online fitness coach. And I thought, why not hear it from um, people within the community that are actually doing really, really well as well? And so um, today is kicking off a series, and if you are listening on the live or you're listening on the podcast, um, I hope you get a lot out of this, and I would love to welcome my man Peter. Welcome to the crew, bro. Thanks, brother. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Cool. No, all good, man. Um, so, bro, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, how you got into the online coaching space and how you got started? Yeah, so I I uh, started an industry in 2008, and I was a typical like do some Les Mills classes and and uh, do some PT on the floor kind of story, uh, and then I went through a phase of kind of letting that slide and, and giving that up, uh, and I came came about a program called Metabolic Precision, and that was a nutrition based one, and I was pretty interested in learning the nutrition side of things. And that reinvigorated me. Uh, so cutting that whole kind of story short, 2013, the uh, founder of that company developed probably one of the first online uh, systems. It was way before Trainerize or anything like that came about. And we were uh, trialing that and using that. Back in the day, we uh, had to respond to our clients via email. And there was a lot of cop yep. copying and pasting. So um, that's where I got into the online side of things, but it was always hybrid right up until uh, probably last year, actually. Yep. Uh, so dabbled in it, uh, never the full-time gig, uh, but after being in the inner circle and then you know, coming across you and Mumba Method and stuff, uh, it kind of yep. gave me the confidence to go, I can probably go, go in and do it full-time. Yeah, mad, bro. Yep. And That's the 100% thing, yeah. Yeah, so you've sort of been around it a, a wee while, man, and, and I guess, like, it seemed like a bit of manual labour back in the day with all of the emails and the copy and paste and stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was good fun. <laughs> yeah. um, what made you decide to focus solely online, bro, and, and sort of move on from the in-person stuff? A couple of things. So the laptop lifestyle is obviously, like, a big draw card is something I've always wanted to do yep. uh, but then then there's also just from my experience uh, the constant frustration of having clients come in work with you train them hard they go home and, and they don't really change from week to week mm -hmm. it, was, it was something that I could never get my head around uh, and yep. then after after diving into lifestyle transformation and really nerding out on what makes people actually say that do the things that they say they want to do kind of realize that there's a big chunk missing from just the one-on-one -on -one style stuff or, or even just the coming to a gym kind of thing. Um, yep. And when, when people, and again, from my experience, um, I might differ, but from my point of view, when someone puts say a hundred dollars into a one hour session, they, the, the weights, the, the, the value weight that they have on that one hour is disproportionate to how impactful that hour can actually be. Uh, so when I work with someone online and they're paying me, you know, that hundred dollars a week to take care of their habits from the foundational level. Uh, now in their mind, they're like, okay, I'm paying a hundred bucks a week for this whole thing rather than this just hour. Yeah, it's, so, it's almost um, like they're 23 hours outside of the gym, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And, like, maybe just on that, bro, like, do you think you could sort of maybe expand on one or two things that you may have done differently? Like, say, for example, you got your in-person, you do your session. What is one or two things that you've implemented as strategies to help them with that other 23 hours? Uh, it's all, all about uh, two things actually like environment is a big thing for, for them so uh, making making sure they understand that um, you know we've all heard the saying you are the average of the five people we hang around 
Uh, yep. when, when, a, when a, let's use a mum for an example, when a mum used to come to me in the gym and say, hey, I, I want to lose weight, it'd be this solo adventure for herself, right? Something she's doing for her and uh, completely missing the point that, you know, her kids, the, whoever she lives with, like that, they all have, they are all going to be impacted in some respect and making sure yep. that they're on board uh, is super important. You know, and then the in setting their environment up for success, like the number one thing, the number one thing that I've found that works best for clients that want to have better nutrition habits is just having more food available. When there's more food available, they're going to take the food out of the fridge and eat it. Um, so that, that's that's from the, from the, that perspective, that's where I start with my coaching. I'm like, all right, what's your environment look like? And then how can we t- take what you're already doing and stack some habits in there, create some routines, stagger some habits, as Paul would put it, to not put it, not not do any more work than they're currently doing just make them more efficient uh, if they're cooking every single night well how about we see if we can't cook every second night and that free up some time to do something active with the kids or, or go to the gym um so yeah uh that's that's controlling the other 97 percent the other yeah. 167 hours yeah now nah, i i love that bro and um like something you just sort of said there at the end is like how to do something active, you know, with the family. And like, that is your niche, bro. Is like, you've, you've sort of gone with us, you know, into your niche um, as, you know, helping families get healthy. Can you share with us a little bit about your niche, how you came up with it and, and how I guess you guys embody it and, and essentially get that message across to people. Yeah. It's, it's not certainly something that I didn't just, figure out uh, figure out one day it's been a progress over the years um i used to be very solo in the way that i ate uh in the way that i trained and then i met my wife megan and then we'd have the typical um fights where you know she would cook something a certain way and i had not one fight we had was um a funny one i always go back to this she cooked a stir fry up and she thought she was doing like the absolute best thing for me and then me and my pig get it was the bodybuilder way was like, oh, I didn't I didn't weigh that protein before you put it in there with all the all the veg, right? <laughs> so it's through those those life experiences we've found our niche, I think. Uh go back to the 17-year-old Pete. There's no way he'd be able to put together a, a, a product, a program that's in a, in a, a brand voice that really spoke to people who cared about their families enough to want to change themselves and change them um, yep. so yeah it's, it's definitely the life experience uh we've gone through certain things like i had uh i would have been borderline bulimic at one stage uh, so mm-hmm. i've gone through my own battle with food and mindset around food and yep. uh, my wife she had chronic fatigue after uh, after we had our second baby so we had to go on a path of uh, healing ourselves to then come back with all these learnings and then in, in embody that through the business, business and the brand. And and what drives it the most now is seeing our kids and the benefits, like they're excelling in gymnastics and swimming um, in school. All of the teachings we've, we've learned along the way, we're like, you know, this stuff works. So it gives us the confidence that we're doing something that's going to have a generational impact. Yeah. Amazing, bro. And so like, essentially man your niche your avatar you guys just live it and breathe it yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, awesome. it's funny like the, only, only the last couple of weeks i think i've probably really gotten clear on that because you still yeah. go from that you can't, still come from that business mind that marketing perspective of all right i'm i'm approaching dads that are over 30 with two kids that run a business and it's very robotic yeah uh that that stuff needs to be clear but then there's the dads that don't really care about what like their family. And then there are the dads that do care. And, and that, yep. that just makes a, a total huge difference with the quality of your experience as a coach working with that person. And the app was, was there any light by light bulb moments, man, around, you know, that difference, I guess, in terms of like marketing to a demographic and in marketing to, I guess, a set of values, was there any sort of, light bulb moments that helped you come to that conclusion? Uh, yeah. So coming up to the Sunshine Coast, um, that was that was some, some good clarification in terms of um, like 
really uh, getting being asked questions uh, about yeah. what your core values are and what do you want to inspire. And as I was I was, I was saying that you know it's, it, they're not they're not new questions, but every time you ask the question and then you re-answer it, I think you get a better quality answer, and, you, and you're answering it from a different perspective each time too. So to have uh, those questions asked again and again, and then get to this point now, uh, yep. I've yeah definitely re refines my the way that I look at marketing uh, from from that perspective. I could do heaps better with my marketing. I know that um, I can speak more to my values, and, and that's something that I'm I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. It also gets hard, like when you see everyone else just spitting out generic stuff uh, to be that individual that does talk more value-based and belief-based and um, that's that's difficult uh, because yep. you know the market wants what the market wants and, and the market just wants calories in calories out they want to know the ones and the zeros but um, being confident enough to talk about what really matters to you so that you do connect on that deeper level is is important and I think yeah that's that's the path that I'm headed down now yeah amazing man and yeah no that's very very cool man and um I think one of the coolest things I've sort of um one of the cool things man that I thought was fucking incredible you guys recently brought out your fit fam cookbook um and we had a chat about that man and I sort of asked you like how did you come up with it and you're like bro it was it's the 10 year process, you know, and <laughs> I, I knew instantly there, man, that anyone who can essentially work on something for 10 years, like there's, there's something deeper than just, Hey, look, I'm going to put out a cookbook for, for families to you know, make some cash. So what sort of, um, what was the inspiration behind it, man? And how did you guys come up with that? Yeah. So very early, uh, very early on in the online piece we used to uh as, as i said use a program called medboy decision and the, and the one thing that they did was they uh created a cookbook and this cookbook was their transformation cookbook and we would buy it as a coach and then give it to our clients and use it as a tool to um to help clients really widen their variety with food make it really easy for them to um you know have good nutritious food available uh, and I saw how powerful that was, but what I also didn't have back then was uh, the the equity, the uh, how does Alex Formosi put it, the reputation, um, mm -hmm. that that compounding gain of doing the same thing over and over again, showing the world the same thing over and over again. I didn't have that. So if I had came out with a cookbook five six years ago, uh, it would have just been a, any other any other cookbook on the shelf, yep. some faceless person um, just, you know, promoting their, their cookbook or putting something together. Um, so it was something that I really had to, I never thought I'd, I'd release a cookbook, to be honest. In fact, I didn't, I didn't know right up until uh, October last year that I would actually release a cookbook in a hardcover. So, so, so from the point of, using somebody else's cookbook we made the transition around 2020 to create our own and create our own around uh, the foods that we ate and we ate regularly and we we got into a really good rhythm as a family where every six to eight weeks we would change the menu up um, and we had a we thought we had about five or ten go-to recipes uh, we had no idea we'd have 52 go-to recipes um, yeah, sure. so I, so I, over the, over the course of say 2022, um, the new year's resolution was to just do a recipe a week and put it together for our clients in a, in an ebook, just a, a digital format. Um, we, we got to about 30, 30 recipes by September. And it was at that point that I decided, Hey, why don't I just put it out to the group and see, see which clients would buy what, what certain products off me. Uh, as a bit of a Christmas present for someone else. So I just had that idea. So I put out a couple of polls and on the list of, of options was uh, like a kombucha brewing kit <laughs> where I'd source all the the jars and the stuff and send it out to them. Uh, there was kombucha itself because I've, 
I've been right into brewing that lately. There was the cookbook hard copy. There was a training kit where I'd get some bands and some TRX stuff and put that together and send it out. So I put up a list of five different things together. And then um, the hard copy, uh, uh, hard copy cookbook was like the number one thing that came out. So that was the, oh, shit, we've got something here. Let's spend a weekend and record 22 recipes in a real format and then put them into the book. So there's 52 there. Um, don't ask me why 52 was the number. It just turned out to be that that was the number that I wanted to aim for. Yep. Um, and so I put that together. We put a post out and then the post blew up. We ended up having 60 orders on Black Friday. So I was just like going ham on this document, making it look really good. And I wanted a couple of point of differences. One of the point of differences was that I wanted the kids involved. So the kids are yep. in all the rooms. And that's to show other kids of parents that we work with. And anyone else who gets the cookbook that, yeah, kids can actually cook. They can get in the kitchen. They can, they don't have to bake. They can actually cook. That was a key differentiation. Um, and I wanted to have uh, an interaction in there where it was like, here are some tasks that you can use to make food fun. Like go to this, go to the local markets and pick something weird out and put it in this salad or, um, you know, just some adventure things. So I put some adventure tasks in there. Um, and I, I truly believe that you can tell somebody, so you blew them the face, calories in, calories out, calorie deficits. You can give them 130 grams of chicken, but they're not going to, they're not going to follow it unless there's the other side to that, where it's like food is, Food is deeply emotional. We eat it to celebrate. Uh, we eat it to grieve and mourn. We eat it to feel good. To to we do we we do a lot with food. Food is very culturally integrated into our lives. And if, if it's not culturally yep. integrated to somebody's life, then um, they're not going to be able to pick that up. So uh, we we made the cookbook as a bit of our uh, legacy. Really, it's it's going to be what our kids promote when they're older um that's what we're hoping for is that they can they can take that and be proud of that they're part of that um and we can help other families do what we've done yeah i think i've, I've have i answered the question <laughs> yeah absolutely bro that like that is absolute gold like there's so much there that that is very, very cool. And I guess a couple of things to sort of unpack that. I, I love what you've done and, and the philosophies you've weaved into it, also bringing the kids in. And that, as you said, just adds that point of difference. And then also the deep, deep thought you've put into it, man, about, you know, making an adventure, getting the kids to go and pick something from, you know, the um, from the markets and, and make it a little bit strange. I'm just sitting here thinking I've got Hunter in the background. It's like, that's what we're doing tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it was very, very cool. And, and also the way you market it, man, you're like, all right, let's go and create 26 reels, you know, super simple. And, and one thing you said there about like the way Alex or Mosey promotes is like consistency show up every single, like, just keep showing up the same message over and over and over and over again. And often we think is, is, you know, for marketing, we have to come up with something new every single day, but you're just repeating that same thing over again, sharing your values through that. And I think it's very, very cool, man. And a couple of ideas that I guess um, for all of our member crew and, and all anyone who watches this is that like, you could do something like that, you know, one workout a week, one of your favorite client workouts per week. By the end of the year, you got 52 workouts you could turn into a book. You got 52 reels you can turn into a book. Even just that little one lead magnet is absolutely huge, bro. And what was, just out of interest, man, what was the post you put up to promote this? Uh, I'll have to share it. I'll share it in the group. But it was a post that was, it was a gratitude post. Yep. Uh, we, we, we thanked from the bottom of our hearts uh, the people who'd already pre-purchased so our clients. Uh, yep. And then I went through the, the benefits of the book. So I, I, we, I weaved in the need for me to have food that felt like I was eating man food and not rabbit food. Uh, yep. that, were, that was simple and easy to put together. You know, I, I weaved in the fact that the girls have put their uh, protein shakes in there that they love to make after school. So I, I, I did put a lot of thought into 
creating that post that spoke to the person who would be like, yes, I want this book because yep. I mean, how many, how many of us, uh, how many parents say, man, these kids, they, they're like bottom, bottomless kids that pits, they, they can't be filled <laughs> after school. Like they're just eat, snacking all, all night. Right. So, yep. um, yeah, it was, it was those sorts, sorts of things that I, I weaved into that post. And then I, That's then I just beautiful. said a, a casual call to action at the end. Like if you want one of these, then, uh, reach out and I, and I sold them all through uh, the full quarter in the sell by so, uh, chat. Yeah. So no landing. Amazing. Pages, any- Nothing fancy, man. Just conversations and putting out, yeah. you know, the benefits. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Cool, bro. And, and, and another big thing, man, I know like at the very heart of what you guys do, you are a family man. And so now you're starting to build a, a fairly large online business and, you know, all of this. How do you balance your time between, you know, family life, creating content and running a business? <laughs> when I saw this question, I looked to Megan and I said, have I got this worked out, babe? And she's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not easy. I, it's not no. easy. No, it's not. And I, I heard something. I don't know where I heard it, uh, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it, it might have even been Leah. Uh, I can't remember who said it, but uh, balance comes from the imbalance. It's the yep. constant rechecks that keep you kind of getting back on track. And with, um, with this whole marketing thing, because I've been marketing for years, what I've what I've learned recently through Mumba, through Sell by Chat, is as you just said, show up every day. The show you only need to show up in a little way every day. Yeah. And then you're gonna have periods that are busy and you're gonna be pumping. And if you're not planned enough, you can miss those, miss the periods that are the lows where you can connect more with your family. So yep. this year we're going into the year like every 12 weeks we're going away somewhere. Um, we're putting our big rocks in, so you know we're going to get that connection time. Um, we're also getting onto that high performance calendar, and like today was a connection uh, coffee. Me and Megan, we had a, a connection coffee where it's just us two, and we talk about just parent things that aren't business related because because that's hard working in a business with your wife. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I have my boss voice on, and and that can get her paid off quite a bit. So um, yeah. figuring out that's that is difficult, but again, checks and balances. Um, those are those are the big things. Getting getting organised and and then becoming more efficient. I and mean, I only recently I popped in the group chat that I, I was uh, looking at the sixteen bucks a month as a, as like an expense I didn't I didn't want to have, but I downloaded yeah. captions anyway. You know, and and I know this. I know that you need to spend money to make money. Um, it's just you know old financial trauma from a kid that keeps me stuck but being aware of that go and get that i got that app and then i realized the app actually has a transcript that you can uh copy so i've been copying this, the transcript and i've just been going to chat gpt and saying hey can you turn this into a short form uh real caption and it comes up with a perfect real caption so yeah. now our, our flow is we record about 20 odd two to three minute videos each Monday for our clients as a check-in yep. feedback. Um, I download that and then I've got content for the week because all Amazing. my clients' problems are solved in those videos. So I'm chopping them up and I'm putting them into captions and putting in the GPT, chat, chat GPT, and then just posting it. And yeah, it's just, it's figuring out what, what flow suits you and what what suits you at the time that you're at the, the stage of life that you're in and the stage of the year as well um that's that's me trying to balance it i reckon <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's quite often man like I, I think what we sign up for is we essentially when you live a life of passion and purpose there's no balance it's it's all or nothing to a point Yep. But it's about it's about just having those times, those connection things, and and making sure that it's part of the whole. Um, and I especially know like me and Jess as well, we're still a hundred percent trying to find our feet through it all. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's very very full on. 
at times working with your partner and and as you said you know sometimes i put my boss hat on and sometimes just puts a manager hat on and we clash a little bit but it's it's one of those things eh? like that you work through as you said man and i, I really like that insight and um thanks for sharing bro because i know that'll help a ton of people man yeah yeah um i just wish i had a, a group like this you know back in the day um because yeah, it's 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 the connection that you get from having a group like this that really counts, and um, I hope everyone's yeah. getting feedback from it. Another thing that we do uh, that I'll touch on before I drop, drop the balance thing is um, every every morning we do ten ten minute time with our kids. Uh, we go yep. off and we have individual time with them, and we've actually looped that into the program that we've got too, because amazing. Yeah. Mums won't go and take care of themselves unless they can check off in their head that they've connected with their kids. And mm. what a lot of us do as parents is we just run around and do like we pick up after and we do everything that we can for them, but it's not structured. So structuring in that connection time has been huge because then we can say, all right, yep, we've connected with them. They've done what they wanted to do with us. Their cup's full. And then we can go and do what we need to do for work. So that's that that's nice. incredible man yeah, yeah that's that's absolutely incredible and i think you've solved a big big challenge there for i know for me that that's a light bulb moment man where like mums don't want to put themselves first and we always say no you got to put yourself first but just having that little strategy is absolutely yeah. massive man that is absolutely incredible um Bro, and like moving forward, man, like how do you guys, you know, continue, what what are your plans to continue to grow the business and your brand in the future? And what are you sort of looking to put in place to, you know, take this to another level? I'm definitely at a point now where I think I need a VA. Mm -hmm. That's yep. purely because of the, the back catalog of content that I know I've got, that I know yep. that they can go in and chop up and, and, disperse uh, uh -huh. and, and also to just take away some of the um level one level two chats like reaching out yeah. and and rapport building uh, i definitely yeah. think that i need to invest in a, a va to do that um mm -hmm. i would love to see us get to a point where we've got uh, maybe a coach taking some check-ins uh, as we grow as well. Yep. See how that goes, though. Um, yep. The first things first, and that's the VA. Yep. We want to really turn the business into a business that is not only service-based, but uh, does have products in it as well. For sure. Yep. But, so the cookbook's the first one. Um, yep. So we want we want to implement a journal as well. Uh, yep. it makes it really easy when you have your program structured to a point where it's like level one level two level three you can create these products so for example the cookbook the, the fit fam cookbook um that's that's essentially our level one so if we're getting a client in and we're thinking about how do we fix their nutrition um that that cookbook solves 100 percent of their problem at level one so Amen. so We've, we've basically delegated that to a product. Um, and then the same thing with the journal is we want to have a journal that has a process by which you go through and you do some mind, mindset and motivation stuff. Um, yep. you, you do some other questions, a bit like a Brennan Bouchard's high performance journal. You have these Absolutely. questions that coach you through a process. And um, yeah, I think if we, if we can start to produce one product I did, I did one product last year. If we can do two products this year and then get to four products next year, we'll get to a point in the business where the service-based stuff is a bit of cream and the products, that's our top, top of funnel. And then yep. pe the people that come through consuming our products will be higher level clients. Um, one thing that really gets me G'd up is like, we're, we're, I said this to Megan, I said, we're published authors. We're self-published authors, right? <laughs> but <laughs> now we've got people out there who've consumed our cookbook that have never coached with us before. At some point down the line, they'll want to coach with us. And yep. at that point, they'll be willing to pay way more than they would had I've just approached them and say, hey, do you want to coach with me? 
second money is far easier than first money bro so yeah 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 absolutely no man like once again bro that's just ticking over so many things and um it, it really is and often as coaches you know we we have that problem of we are a service-based business and quite often you know as as growth-minded coaches our service gets more and more valuable but it's still a time-based service and you know, at times, um, you know, you want to go for a holiday, maybe you want to travel around the world for a year and just not see a computer screen at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I think the ability, as you said, man, one to two products a year, you know, you, you solve a lot of problems. And a couple I just had there is like, I think what you said about the level one, you know, you've solved that problem of nutrition through your product. What a what a great, great way to look at, you know, services and, and products and offerings for your business. Just solve problems. What a what a brilliant way to think about it, man. Um, yeah. No, it's it's amazing, bro. And man, just probably right now you guys are closing in on a on a fairly profitable business. And you know, you're about to probably have another record month, which is awesome. And what do you sort of think would be, you know, three takeaways that have helped you succeed as an online coach? Um, and you're sort of coming up to see you're closing in on about $12,000 per month, which is pretty exciting. Um, what would be three key takeaways and potentially just expanding on some of the strategies that you're using specifically to help you grow your business? Yeah, my the, the first uh, key takeaway is if you're not, in the DMs, you don't have a business. Um, that's something that's really stuck in my mind over the last six months. And it, it's a, a wonderful thing to be able to chat to a thousand people a month. <laughs> and yeah. and is this one coming from a go on. Yeah, on that, man, like that's a great way to look at it because that will freak a lot of people out. But what yeah. a what a brilliant way, man. And how did you sort of come to that? Because you're one of the first people I've heard to say that. So where did you sort of come to that mindset? So for years, um, I've run a business and in a, in a box, I've, I've um, sort of sat there and tried to write blogs and do all the yep. solopreneur stuff that didn't have a huge impact. And over the last six months, getting into this fourth quarter and just reconnecting with old friends, meeting new people, um making sales but if, if i'm honest probably five percent of those have been sales 95 percent of it has been mental health connecting with people just being of service and feeling as though you're having an impact on the world that's how i've, mm -hmm. I've really come to value that part of it that key takeaway yeah. um it's 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 huge and i think the way that trent puts it in the scripts where it's, Hey, I'm just being social on social is just so simple, but so profound. It's, yep. uh, it's very easy to be caught behind the screen and as and just be a viewer. Um, one thing that I say to my daughter all the time is don't use social media to consume, get on there and pr produce something and be more, more of a producer than a consumer. Um, uh, I think a, that a great, yeah. A great quote around that is like, you got to ask yourself, are you are you stealing time or are you improving someone's time by you being on social media? I think it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 hundred yeah, percent. I, I think it's very easy to be that consumer sitting behind the, the screen and um, mm -hmm. staying safe. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my big key takeaway is, is have conversations uh, with, with people and, and, and it's and it's no different to uh, being in a Turkish bazaar 2,000 years ago trying to sell bread, <laughs> as you put it. You know, yeah, you'd be yeah. you'd sitting out the front shouting, bread, bread, hot bread, bread for sale. And no different. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I, guess I haven't had that background that you have with, um, you know, being or working for a, a, a charity in, in um, the shopping centres and, and, and being yeah. forced in that position. I haven't had that, so... Uh, because I haven't had that, I've, I've really had to force myself to get into the mindset that I'm in right now with, with reaching out and being yeah, and being okay with that. So uh, my second yeah. my second takeaway, um, I think it's really important that your business is as close to 
your values as possible because you're going to you're going to feel good about it if you're just ripping off someone else's program or methods you're not really going to be invested in it from a heart perspective um and then that will that will your confidence will wa waver um i i have my confidence waver even now and, and i'm so attached to this this method um so i don't think i would still be going unless i've weaved the personality into it the the values and all of that um so that's that's really important um and the third the third key takeaway is you know nothing's ever or yeah nothing's ever linear like you're not going to go from a to b straight up like i i remember october was a low month and then there was a high month the next month um yeah. but just showing up and, and turning up inside that full quarter chat uh even when everyone's making sales around you <laughs> and you're not yeah. just turning up is gonna keep you in the game and you know there's always that second half if you you, you you decide when you quit um so yeah got feeling the fear going in, and you know something i'm really working uh, really seeing right now is how undisciplined i am <laughs> yep. and it sounds sounds crazy me sitting here giving advice but I, I am like you put up that post the other day of the sales challenge sheet i oh, totally forgot about that sheet because i've got too many sheets in my in my drive yeah you know? yeah um, so I need to take the time to consolidate and to get more discipline. And it's through those breakdowns that you have breakthroughs. It's, it's knowing that. It's, it's knowing that with every summit, you're going to have another down and another valley to, to kind of crawl your way through. Um, things will blow up and things are going to not go the right way. But it's after that, that that's where the joy comes. It's yeah, I get excited for it now when when things start to break down. It's like, all right, cool, something's on the something's on the horizon. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. I think I think that right there, man. And it's it's funny because the mindset you're speaking of right now is is what most people will. The opposite of that is what stops most people in their tracks. You know that the fear of loss, the fear of hardship, the fear of showing up every single day, and and maybe not even getting somewhere. And you actually are now enjoying it. Like when things yeah. break down, when when you go through that struggle, it's like, cool, there's something coming. I'm looking forward to that. Now bring it on. You know, that's that's incredible, bro. Um man, this this has been fucking incredible, bro. Um, it's it's such a cool, like for me sitting here, I've I've learned so much from this, bro. So I really, really thank you. Um for sharing all of this with us, man. Is there anything maybe potentially you could leave us with um, in terms of, you know, um, yeah, just, just a couple of parting words or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I, I think we're all here to uh, leave it, like leave, leave something behind us, um, make an impact. Yeah. So we're only very, we're only very young as online coaches, you know, accountants, solicitors, solicitors, they're they've been around for hundreds of years, thousands. So we're we're on the forefront of um, this industry, and people are going to be skeptical. People are going to be uh, thinking you're a scam artist, and it's and it's those people that you want to change their mind. You want to you you want that use that as fire, not something that is going to put out your flames. Um, I had a day the other day where I just got hammered in this group, <laughs> got absolutely <laughs> smacked and, and I did, I got my confidence dropped, but then I came out of that and I was like, you know what, I'm like, this has just fired me up even more to, to put more content out there, to, to double down on, on the message and, and, um, yeah, just convince them, change their minds. It's like, that's, that's just, that's just the, the battle that you, you've chosen. <laughs> That's the hard thing you've chosen, so just embrace it. Nobody said changing in the world would be easy, bro. No. <laughs> it's um no, nah, I love that man, and and it, it really is, isn't it? Like we've we've chosen something that is worth essentially putting our life into, um, and we're very very blessed to have something like that because a lot of people don't have it. You know, they go to work yep. every single day hating their job you know essentially just that 
I, I would hate that existence, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, we are extremely blessed, blessed to do something we're passionate about, get out of bed to do something we love. Um, and we've got to expect that, hey, on the flip side of that, it's going to come with a few battle scars, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I would hate to live in a a, a, a a box and just have no, uh, you like, I love the fact that I can do something and see the impact straight away. Like I can, I can, I'm not a part of a thousand, you know, thousand team um, company that works over in another part of the world. I'm, I'm, I'm right yeah. in it, and I can see Sally and the, her kids and how her kids are getting a, a benefit. From what Sally's doing and, and that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do have we have Amazing. great. Amazing, bro. No, um, awesome, man. Thank you, thank you so much for your time today, and thanks for sharing your journey. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, nah, really, really appreciate it, bro.